Wow, this froggy hole that I built in the last episode is beautiful. I'm so glad I built this place. So tranquil. Anyway, hello and welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. Did you like the way I flew through that small cave just then? I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it, but the evidence speaks for itself. Anyway, I have a plan for today, and it involves alleys. Problem 1. We have no alleys. Problem 2. We have no idea where they are. So I guess it's time for us to go exploring 1.19 once again. I should probably make sure that I have some leads for this. Now exploring the new terrain starting from our ancient city seems to have worked out well for us in the past, so we're going to do that again. Oh gosh, I just looked at that enderman. Uh, can I bait it into the portal? Yes I can! What a fool! Did he move anything? That's their favourite thing to do in this cave, they just love to grief it and I can't do anything about it. I think everything looks okay though. Right, let's gear up. It's battle time! Where is it? Oh. Oh! This is tragic! My friend, you have been severely outmatched. There was never any chance for you. I almost feel bad. Oh dear. Let me put you out of your misery. You know, I had half a thought to take off my armour and humiliate that Enderman just then. But I am so glad I didn't. Just imagine what would have happened if it teleported out of the portal and killed me. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway... To the ancient city. Here we are, back in the good old ancient city project. You know, I feel like I should test that central portal again. What happens if I try to fly through it like a battering ram? Would the entity on the other side have countermeasures in place for that or what? I say we give it a try, okay? Here goes nothing. Wait. What? What just happened? Did I just go through the portal? Or did I just bounce straight back out again. That was really weird. Uh, let's move on from that. I don't like it. Now, can I fly all the way to the surface from here? I feel like I'm pushing my flying capabilities every time I do this. But it looks like we're able to get out. Awesome. Let's go exploring. I'm looking for either a pillager outpost or a woodland mansion, as that's the only place where I'll be able to find myself some alleys. Well, this is certainly a surprise. I spent ages wondering where an iceberg biome is in my world, and now I've found two within two episodes. Incredible! Aha! There we go! We finally found ourselves a pillager outpost. Oh, uh, hang on. This isn't just a mere outpost. This is an entire pillager camp! Look at how many tents and other stuff it has. Oh, it has alleys though. We have two confirmed here. That's four, six, an iron golem too. My goodness. We have eight alleys here. Is that rare? That feels rare. I think I've just come across a whole treasure trove of alleys. Do you mind? I know I'm the invader here, but I like to think of myself as a rescuer. And on that note, I'm going to relieve you of your prisoners. Golem first. He'll be a good distraction. Go. Go get him, golem. Go. Go! Yes, Golem! You did so well! <laughs> You're free now, Alays. Have a fence post. Well, that's everyone broken out of their cells, so let's get out of here. Oh dear. I can already tell this is going to be a pain, isn't it? Those Alays are getting uncomfortably far away from me. Oh, there's trees too. I can't get the Golem through this. <laughs> and now there's phantoms. And a creeper. Oh dear. This is going to be hard to get everyone back home in one piece. Get away from me. This is a rescue, not a kidnapping. Oh, oh no. Oh, I have to be careful with my arrows, don't I? <laughs> if I hit this golem, he's going to try and kill me, isn't he? Oh, it just keeps getting better. I'm so far away from home. <laughs> this journey may be more difficult than I expected. Luckily for me, though, I just found an ocean. It's hopefully going to be smooth sailing from here. Although, is it just me, or do I only have seven alleys now? What happened to the eighth one? Oh man, that thing could be anywhere now. I can't believe I've already lost one of them. Ah, oh, land again. I couldn't just take the boat all the way back home, could I? 
No, the world has to make this more difficult for me because I was clearly having too easy of a time. Wait, I recognize that village. I'm home! Or basically home anyway. This is the village I discovered all the way back in episode 2. I kidnapped my villagers from here. And locked some up it seems. Now I should still have a tunnel here. Yes, there it is. Sweet. I just need to follow this tunnel, then follow the river back out to the ocean, and then go around the mountain and we'll be home once again. Finally, here we are. That was certainly an interesting journey. Now that I have these alleys here though, I feel like I need to give them a proper home. So let's hitch up the golem over here where he won't bother anyone. And the alleys can go stay in the bee farm for now. Right, so I have quite a bit of building to do. First off, I want a home for the alleys, where I can breed them for even more alleys. Because I don't want to have to try and find more if these ones happen to die for whatever reason. And the second thing I want to do is build a bridge from that tower across to this mountain. I feel like that would give me access to building opportunities over here that I didn't really have before. So let's get straight to it. It's time for building. And welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. We got quite a lot done, didn't we? This bridge turned out better than I expected, and I'm glad to have even more infrastructure in the world now, even if it doesn't go anywhere just yet. Anyway, I decided to build an identical tower on the other side, but it is currently lacking a jack-o'-lantern skeleton, which is an issue, because I'd quite like to call this skeleton tower bridge, and that name only makes sense if both towers have skeletons. But that's fine, because if I remember correctly, two years ago I went on a naming spree of Pumpkin Pals. And I think there was a jack-o'-lantern skeleton over here somewhere. Maybe? I might be able to make use out of the night time for once. The dynamic lighting should make it easier for me to spot him. Ah, there it is! I've got to say, it's in a pretty safe spot too. I don't think I'll move it into the tower in this episode but at least I know where it is now. I think there was a jack-o'-lantern zombie around here too somewhere. Are they still around? Ah yes, there they are. Perfect. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that one, but I'm glad it's still alive after all this time. The main point of that time lapse though was to build ourselves a home for the alleys. So we've got the mother of all alleys here carrying the alley house, which I guess is technically an alley breeding station. We've got quite a bit of copper in this build, which is still waiting to age so I can wax it. But we've also added frog lights into the mix, so it's good to be able to make use of those. And up here, we have our giant alley! So this was an interesting build to do. We've got powder snow for the eyes, with a hidden light source behind, which really helps give the alley a healthy glow. And I just love the way it's holding on to the build with this bar here. I feel like it helps give this alley a bit of personality. And for the wings, I decided to make them out of light blue concrete powder. Now concrete powder has a bit of a gravity issue, as I'm sure you're aware, so I made use out of candles to help prop up the wings. And I actually really like how the candles have turned out, because it makes it look like the alley has a little bit of fairy dust coming off of it, which is pretty awesome, I think. Oh, it looks like we've got some snow here. I might need to add some string to stop that from forming. But anyway, here is the interior. Do you like it? because I like it a lot. I think the alleys will love it. So we've got some amethysts on the floor here because alleys love amethyst. And the plan is that I can just put a music disc into this jukebox and I'll be able to breed the alleys. Oh, it's so cool that I'll just have that thing floating above the mountains now. It certainly adds to the view. The house for alleys is nothing without alleys though, so let's go move them in real quick, shall we? Oh, hello there. Why do these Endermen have to keep getting themselves trapped in here? Will this ever stop in this world? Right, come with me, allies. I have something to show you, and I think you'll love it. I, uh, don't really have a good way of getting these guys up here, so we'll put leads on them, pillar up so they don't lose me. Ah! I was wondering where the seventh one was. You thought you'd get away from me, didn't ya? And I've lost it again. 
How have I managed that? <laughs> Wait, there it is. Come back, please. Oh, thank you. Now this is going to be your new home. What do you all think? I hope you like the crystals. Let me just close up my door wall again. Now, do you allies like other side? I promise you, I think you'll like it. Yeah? Yeah? It's an absolute bop, right? Oh yeah, look at them dance! I've done well. I need Amethyst to breed these fairies up though, so let's take down this pillar and get some. This will actually be a good test for the Amethyst farms that I built in this world too. I've been in the overworld for quite a while, so I'm curious as to how many shards I have now. Oh, the chest is full! And so is the hopper. Oh, but that one isn't. Still though, that's a pretty good amount of amethyst for just being around the farms every now and then. Hello fellas, I brought your favourite food, amethyst shards. So we'll just put those into this chest here for safekeeping, I think. Now that's for me. Oh wow. <laughs> this is genuinely amazing, I love how this has turned out. So the way to breed allies is a little bit interesting compared to other mobs. You have to have a music disc playing in a jukebox nearby, and that will make them dance. And then, you just have to feed them an amethyst shard, and they will duplicate for you. It's an interesting breeding mechanic for sure. It seems like my trapdoor wall is making them think that they can escape though, so I might need to tie all of these allies up to a fence post or something. For now though, this second generation of allies can hold an amethyst shard so that I know who is who. Well, this has certainly turned out to be a successful project. I wanted an LA breeding station, and now I have one. I would quite like some fence posts though. Uh, let's go with Oak actually. Oh, I see you all at that door. I'm not falling for that trick. Let's go to the other side so they don't all escape when I try to go in. Uh, ah. I've just been completely bamboozled. They've outsmarted me. Please come back inside, please. Oh dear. Right, let's shut the trap doors for now. The other allies will probably try to come in again. They won't go away too far. Ah, there we go. Welcome back to the inside. Are you the last escapee? Please tell me you're the last one. Oh, there's another one. Surely this is the last one. Now that we've tied them all to the center of this room though, I think we've got a very good opportunity to see them dance. Oh, this is so cool! I'm so glad this mechanic is in the game. It makes the whole trip to get these guys worth it. Just to dance with these guys. I wonder. I wonder if I should put more in here. Is 14 a crowd? I don't know. But for now, I feel like naming the OG allies as what they are. An OG! And I know which one's which because they're the ones holding the fence posts. I did a little bit of other building as well though. I built this little thing over here. So what this is, is the entrance and exit to my lush cave. You see there? That's the water elevator that I put in ages ago. It's been begging for me to give it some proper decoration for the longest of times. But now it's done. Ah! A wandering trader! Um, okay, I have an ultimatum for you. Give me mangrove proper ghouls, and you get to live. Deal? Oh dear. My friend. You have most certainly failed me. Now I happened to check on something else during the time lapse, and it's the Black Hole Lion Farm over here. Remember Gargantua? Well, it's been vomiting out iron for every second that I've been in the overworld. And it is now officially full. I have iron despawning now. That's not good. I can't let the iron go to waste. What if I want to use it? Well, I've crafted all of the iron up into iron blocks, and I've got to say, I am incredibly rich right now. Just look at all of this. I could build with iron blocks if I wanted to, but will I? I don't know. I don't plan on doing that just yet. Now, do you like TNT? Because I like TNT, and this alley also likes TNT. In fact, this alley is a bit of a superhero. He is... The Invincible Boy! Allow me to demonstrate with this mega TNT bomb that would kill anything else. Now, if I can just bait this little guy into the boat. There we go, just as planned. So, 
Why is this alley called the Invincible Boy? Oh, come on. Why do you think? Let me show you why. Ah. Uh, let's just ignore that mishap. Okay, first time for the second time. Let me show you this alley's powers of invincibility. And you have it right there! This little guy survived that TNT bomb like it was nothing, and I can't even hurt it. I can't hit it with my sword, I can't shoot it with my bow, my axe is completely useless. This alley is truly an invincible boy, and as such, I need to give it its own dedicated home at some point, I think. But for now, it's going to be left to fly around the bee farm with the bees. I am in need of sand for more TNT for the nether though, so let's grind. And welcome back, we are now the proud owners of 16 shulkers full of sand. This should have us sorted for quite a while. It should be more than enough for the TNT that I plan to use in this episode. So let's craft some of it up straight into TNT. Oh, it looks like we've got some redstone here. I think that's the leftovers from that first time I obliterated the nether. What a throwback. Anyway, I plan to build a TNT bomber array to slowly but surely evaporate this entire side of the nether. I want to be as efficient as possible with this. So we've got the dispensers placed six blocks apart to make sure that everything is exploded beneath. And we're going to protect the dispensers with crying obsidian. Because crying obsidian is actually a loophole for the fact that I can't mine obsidian anymore. Remember that little rule from a couple episodes back? Never again? Well, crying obsidian is technically a different block to normal obsidian. So that's what we're going to use as a temporary blast-proof block this time. And we're going to surround the crying obsidian with blocks so that the TNT is aligned with the hole beneath. Otherwise, it might get stuck inside of a block and not do any damage. The TNT bomber array isn't going to build itself though, so let's get to doing that, shall we? And here we are, we have a fully completed TNT bomber array. The only thing now is to push the button and then let the nether detonate. So we have 20 TNT in most of the dispensers, but some of the ones to the left here have less because they have less netherrack to blow through. 20 TNT should hopefully be enough for all of this though, and I'm hoping to be efficient here. So it's the moment of truth. Will this machine blow itself up? Well. Let's find out the answer, shall we? Ah! Well, it looks like the cobblestone wires have exploded, but I think the dispensers should have at least been saved. Hopefully. Uh, no. Some of them exploded anyway. How did that happen? Was it because this one in particular was slightly closer than six blocks? Maybe. Anyway, this lava is going to get in the way. So I think it's best to get rid of that after each blast. The bomber array has been fully repaired now though, so let's give it the second moment of truth. Oh yeah, that was beautiful. You know, this TNT bomber array is actually incredibly satisfying, but I think the rest of this will be best shown as a time lapse. So I hope you enjoy everyone, let's go.
And welcome back everyone, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. So we have completely removed the eastern side of the nether hole other than the lava ocean and the nether fortress now. That is a lot of progress, and it was all made possible with the beautifully destructive block known as TNT. I had to add a little bit more TNT to some of the dispensers and they were only able to blow everything up down to the lava ocean, so I had to blow the bottom section up separately. But I feel like I finally have the perspective that I've always wanted with the nether hole though. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but this view almost looks like I've messed with the FOV by quite a bit. But I swear, my FOV setting is on normal. This place just looks that vast now. <laughs> we do happen to have a small infestation of baby piglins on the nether floor now. A little bit weird, and I think this happened because I wasn't really paying attention to their spawns this time. So they'd pick up a block of netherrack or something and then run off into the distance. I think I'll leave them for now, but they will die eventually. They are, after all, standing in the future lava ocean. They might get some toasty toes at some point. I wonder if I should give them a light source to hold on to. I feel like that would work quite well with the dynamic lighting at the moment. But yeah, their future prospects aren't too good, as all of these stone slabs around the magma circle will eventually be lava. Now, who's this? Is this a teeny tiny magma cube? Oh yes, of course it is. Hello there, teeny tiny magma cube. How are you doing, eh? The nether chicken, I think, is also still alive? But the last time I saw him, he was patrolling the edge of the magma block circle, which is a little concerning. Oh yes, there he is. So, I don't know if he's just patrolling the perimeter of the island, or... I don't know. Maybe he is just doing a little bit of patrolling, and making sure the floor is safe for me. If that's the case, then this chicken is a hero. I just have one question, really. Why does this chicken never lay eggs? Like, I realised recently that I have never, not even once, seen a random egg from the nether chicken. What's with that? Why don't you lay eggs? Why don't you lay eggs? I mean, I'm not complaining, but, you know. Anyway, with this amount of progress on the nether from the TNT bomber array in this episode, I'm currently thinking that I might be able to fully remove the last side of the nether hole with the same device in the next episode. And then, I might be able to do content more often. That'll be good, right? Also, do you like my netherrack chest monster? I decided that I should be trying to keep more of the stuff from the nether hole, because these resources is what shows the work that I've put into this place. I'm a little bit annoyed with myself that I let most of it despawn over the last year and a half, actually. Just imagine the storage mess that I could have had. Oh, the possibilities. It looks like the blaze farm is also a lot more visible now that the netherrack has been removed. I think I'm going to have to give it a proper exterior at some point. I didn't have to care about what it looked like when I first built it. But now it's actually quite noticeable. Ooh, here we go. I was actually in range of the frog light farm for that entire time lapse, so I'm really interested to see what we've got. I will admit... It's not the best of frog light farms. It may well have 69 frogs, but they don't seem too fussed about eating the magma cube sometimes. I'll often see a few just hopping around in here being completely ignored by the frogs, which is a bit of an issue. But I guess it doesn't matter too much because just look at all of the frog lights that I've been getting. I am happy with this. Now, unfortunately, I have blown up a few holes in the great red glass wall in this episode, but before I fix them up, I was wanting to ask a question. Should I use a different colour glass to do the repairs with? Because I have to say, I actually quite like the idea of having orange scars from TNT and gas explosions just spread out across the wall. Let me know your thoughts, because I think the scars could look pretty cool here. Oh, by the way, while I repair my tools, I thought I'd let you know that I didn't break a single tool in this video. Are you proud of me? Because I usually accidentally break some of them. It's a genuine problem of mine. I wonder how long I can keep this no-breaking streak for. I hope it's a long, long time. I just have to believe. No more breaks. Oh. I just broke the ender chest. For goodness sake, have I broken the streak already? Do ender chests count? This is why I keep two on me, though. Oh, nice. Look at those statistics. 4.3 million netherrack mined, and that's with me blowing up most of the nether with TNT. What a world! Speaking of TNT, how much have I used here? 68,000, huh? 
I think we can say for sure that that was totally worth it. If I've already mined over 4 million netherrack, then I dread to think of what that number could have been without the explody death blocks. Now, if you remember from the last episode, I have just two hostile mobs left to kill for the Monsters Hunted advancement. I know that one of them is the Piglin Brute, because they weren't yet added to the game when I first went Bastion raiding in this world. The other one, I have been informed, is probably the Zoglin, which is probably right, because I've not really had any opportunities to even get a Hoglin near a portal into the overworld in this world yet. So I was thinking we hunt down these last two mobs and get ourselves the Monsters Hunted Advancement. I think we'll go with the Brute first, so let's try to find a Bastion that we haven't raided yet in this world. But it has to have been generated since 1.16.2, because they will only spawn in a Bastion upon world generation. And it looks like we've already come across our first candidate. We are a little close to the Nether Hall at 00, zero though, so I'm not too hopeful about this one. One way to know for sure is to actually turn on the subtitles for the game. That should tell me whether there are any brutes around here, as brutes are considered different mobs to the normal piglins. Yeah, at this point, I don't think there are any brutes here. But I do see a chest. And I find myself very tempted to just do a quick grab and run. Should I? Yes, let's do it. Quick. Woo. That was dangerous. <laughs> let's just settle down over here and see what we got. Yes! We finally got Pigstep. Oh, I've been wanting that music disc in this world for years. <laughs> Sweet. This whole trip has already been worth it. And that was only the first chest today. Wow. There are no brutes here though, so the search continues. Ah, here's another Bastion. I'm fairly certain I haven't been here before, so this is going to be worth a look. Huh. I don't actually see any pigs here. Why's that? Where are they all? No complaints here though, if that means I can just go through their chests with no consequences, then I will do. Netherite scrap and a diamond shovel. Do not mind if I do. And we've got another shovel in here. Excellent. I'm going to take all of the gilded blackstone as well. That's always a good plot to get more of. Oh, there are the piglins. I was wondering where they were. I think they've all managed to get stuck in random holes. And if they've had time to do that, I suspect that this bastion was previously generated as well. So I guess the search for brutes continues once again. We've come across another bastion here. We're pretty far from 0, zero at this point. But I've got to say, I don't think this one has any brutes either. I think I would have seen one by now if that was the case. Target acquired. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have the brute in our sights. This pig has no idea what's coming. Now, can I kill him from here? Because that would be nice. Oh, a pit him into lava. Does that count as my kill? Is it in my statistics now? Wait, there's no Piglin Brute entry yet. Interestingly enough, though, that kill did count for the advancement, but it did not count towards the statistic statistics. I can't get my words out. <laughs> I feel like I've been scammed, though. I want to be able to show the brute kill in the statistics. Luckily enough, though, I've spotted a second one. Let's see if we can take him down from here. There we go. That one should count as my kill this time. Yup, there it is. I have now officially killed one piglin brute. It's a lower number than it should be, but at least I can see the brute in my statistics now. Now, if I just find my way back home, and, uh, this might be proving a little bit difficult. I think I've gotten lost. Times like this, you just gotta find a wall and dig your way through the netherrack. Ooh, nether gold. I'll take that. Thank you. Oh! Oh my! I was not expecting that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Is it just two debris? Yeah, it is. Wow, I can't believe I just randomly ran into that. Well, given that I now have three out of the four that I need for a netherite ingot, I almost feel like I should try properly raiding some of these bastions and get that last little piece I need. No debris here. I'll take the gilded blackstone and the book though. Ooh, banner pattern. I don't actually know if I have that one already or not, so let's take that. Ah, there we go. One ancient debris and one netherite scrap. I now have enough for an ingot. Let's go home. Oh, wow. That actually looks quite cool flying towards the nether hole like this. It almost looks like a glitch and the terrain hasn't generated or something. 
but no, there's literally nothing there. <laughs> our next target is the Zoglin. So we're going to need to lure a Hoglin back to our nether hub somehow. And I think the easiest way of doing that is to just build a temporary bridge. Because I don't want to just build a portal in a crimson forest. I won't be able to remove it now that I can't mine obsidian. So to be on the safe side, it's got to be a bridge. Luckily, it's actually just a straight shot from the nether hub to the crimson forest. This bridge doesn't actually need any turns in it. Ah, there's a Hoglin. Should I do the baby Hoglin? Let's do the baby Hoglin. You fancy coming down? Let's just break that block there. There we go. Now we just have to get this Hoglin back to the nether hub again. Oh, one just spawned on the bridge. You know what? I'll take that one instead. The baby can live. That's perfect. Yes, follow me, Hoglin. Let's do this in F5 mode. I don't want to accidentally lose it and have it despawn on me. Oh gosh, no, not the gas. <laughs> okay, it's fine, it missed. No, there's another one. I've got to take this one out quickly. There we go. My goodness. I'm lucky I didn't lose the hoglin just then. Come with me. You're fine, I promise. Oh no, not the blazers. Oh, please tell me it can survive that. Oh, thank goodness it's fine. I swear, this world is doing everything it can to kill this hoglin before I send it through a portal. What on earth is going on here? Right, okay, we should be safe here now. My goodness. I'm impressed that this pig is still alive after what it just went through. I don't want to risk it despawning at all when it goes through to the overworld. So let's give it a name tag now. There we go. Now come with me. I have a portal to shove you through. Wait, why'd you stop? Oh. Oh no. Oh come on. I've made a big mistake here. My nether hub is just about as non-hoglin friendly as it gets. Just look at all the crying obsidian. The respawn anchors, the portals. They're scared of everything in here. I didn't even think of that. Okay, I have a plan. We're gonna dodge the central room in its entirety. It's too anti-purpose for what I'm trying to do right now. So we're actually gonna use our home portal here instead. And make a hole in the side of the monument that we can hopefully get the hoglin through. Yeah, this should work. Follow me! I'm tasty, I promise. Good, it's in the room. I can lock him in at least. Let's just repair the damage now before I forget. Oi! No! Get away from my hoglin! He's my prey, not yours! I thought they were about to start hunting then. I don't want to use sweeping edge here, so let's use the axe for this last piglin. There we go. Right, how am I going to get this guy through the portal when he's terrified of it? I have an idea. We're going to push the hoglin towards the portal with pistons. And eventually, it will freak out and run through to the overworld and turn into a zoglin, where we will hopefully kill it and finally get ourselves the Monsters Hunted advancement. Oh, it's already gone through. That was easier than I thought it would be. Right, Monsters Hunted, here we come. Let's gear up. This fight will be legendary. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh no, it's killing my fish. Stop. How dare you. Oh, my poor tropical fish. Did it kill anything else? I don't think so. That's lucky. It only got the one. Now that we have the advancement though, I feel like we need to remember this day. Both the rotten flesh from the Zoglin and the fish casualty, which will go into our chest of first here. Which I think I will rename to the chest of memories. Because it's not really about the first anymore. It's about interesting and important events in the world. So yeah, chest of memories it is. So we've done quite a lot in this episode, haven't we? We found alleys and built our alley breeding station up in the sky over here. We also cleared out an entire side of the nether hole. And got ourselves the monsters hunted advancement. Wow, have I been productive or what? There's only one way to end this episode though, and that is with Pigstep. There we go. Look at them all dance. <laughs> Even the allies love this song. Even they appreciate the fine art. That is the Pigstep music disc. Oh, hang on. They're even spinning in time with the music. <laughs> 
That's amazing. Oh, wow. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thanks for watching.